My name is Sherry Hunt here at Living Well Cancer Resource Center. Today we're going to be printing with doilies onto ball jars. So you'll just take a clear ball jar, any size actually will do, and you're going to be painting it with chalk paint. Okay, you could just paint it with a sponge brush or any brush that you might have in your garage. You're going to paint them two coats all over and just let them dry. After that, I want you to open up your drawers, whether it's in your dining room or your kitchen, and see if you have any doilies at home. Doilies that might be your mom's, your grandma's, just a nice little um, symbolism and some great memories um, from maybe sitting around the dining room table. We're going to be printing the doilies with acrylic ink or acrylic ink and acrylic paint. So I actually um, mixed purple and this color green to make a nice evergreen. I'm going to have it on a plexiglass, you could put it on a paper plate, you could put it on a little piece of uh, wood, masonite, and you're just going to roll a little bit out. I do have a lot on here, so if I'm going to be um, putting it onto my doily, I want to make sure that I don't dip it where I have too much of an excess. I'm going to dip it and then I'm going to roll it over here so you hear that pulling sound and a little squeak from my brayer. I need oil like the Tin Man. All right, so I'm going to be pulling out. If I pull in, roll in, I'm going to get like a little tamale. I want to make sure that I pull out from the center each time I get the ink on. I did wet my doily under the sink just completely um, with water. I squeezed it out, rolled it in a paper towel to get all the excess out. I do have a spray bottle here if I'm getting a little dry with my paint or the doily is getting a little um, dry. You can go ahead and just Spray that and get it a little wet as you go along. I want to make sure all my white parts are covered here. Getting enough on there to get a good print, but not too much where you're filling in all of these little circles and details. Okay, I think I'm about set here. I want to make sure that I have paper towel. I do use a baby wipe right now so I don't get any fingerprints on it. I'm going to take my ball jar, put my hand in it, and I'm just going to lay the doily right on top. I'm not going to press it down. This is when I'm going to use my newsprint. If I use newspaper on white or a light color, it might um, make the, pa the paint underneath a little bit uh, black, gray. Um, every time I pick up my paper, I want to make sure that I'm not moving the color around. So that's why I have a nice little pile. And you want to make sure you get your prints even on the bottom is kind of fun. You'll sign your name to this, but it might be fun to have a nice little print on the bottom as well. You can go all the way up to the, the lip of the jar, and then you're just going to peel it off from one side. And then you'll keep going all the way around so your entire jar is completely covered. You can use botanicals if you wanted to do the same thing. You can roll these out, put a little ink on your fern or something from your garden, which is great. Again, I'm only going in one direction when I pull or put the ink on. And I'm just going to show you this with a little piece of paper, what this looks like. I think I've said this, if you are watching a fan of the videos, I have said that ferns are one of my favorites, but this is what it would look like on the ball jar if you were to print it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and nice flat. And you can just peel it up and then you have a nice print. And that would look awesome on a ball jar. You could use any size. Um, right now, Mary's going to be showing you how to plant herbs from your garden uh, into these. You could use them as a place setting or give them away and make someone's day just leaving it by their door. Take care. Have fun. We'll see you in a little bit. Hi, my name is Mary Zupke. I'm a registered dietitian at Northwestern Medicine and also here at Living Well. And today we're planting some herbs for our ball jar project. So I wanted to show you kind of how we started the herbs. The reason why we're doing this is because the herbs have so many good health benefits and they're part of the Mediterranean plan where we're using these fresh flavors without using extra salt that decreases inflammation. 
And so today we have, we're going to be doing some basil, which has got some wonderful antioxidants. And then also um, I'm showing here some fresh mint, which is, you know, as we know, good for fresh breath, but also can help if you're having nausea, so you could use that in your tea. So um, this is a good way to uh, keep it nice and fresh in a jar after you've grown it. So when we're growing the herbs, we're going to start out with a little seed pod area, and we're going to use the seed starter mix. So right now you can see here we have all of these little cells, and we put little seeds in each one. And for this one, since it's a larger uh, egg container, I have labeled which herbs I have in which rows. Now you can use any kind of container at home. You can use your own egg carton if you want, or even just a takeout container that you have, or cottage cheese, or anything like that. You don't need it to be really deep when you're just starting the seeds. So the key to making sure that your seeds work is making sure that the soil or the seed starter mix, that's important. The seed starter mix is thin enough and light enough where the roots can grow down very easily. If you use just soil that's out in your front yard, it's going to be too dense, the roots won't grow, and then the seeds won't sprout. So you really need the seed starter mix. This is um, an organic one, if you prefer. And then you want to make sure when you're starting that you have the soil nice and damp. So we can start with a watering can first. And we want to kind of mix it together. This is a glass bowl so that this little trowel is not going to bust it. You have to be careful if you're using glass. And then you can see how this is really dry. So you want to add quite a bit of water because you want it to be damp, but you don't want it to be clumping together like mud. So make sure that you stir it around. And sometimes you need to get your hands in there just to make sure that it's damp enough. All right, so this is perfect. So now you would take this and add it to your seed starter planter if you want. And then you're going to have it nice and smooth on the top. Fill that up. And then you're going to add your seeds right to the very top of it. And then you just put a little quarter of an inch of soil right on top of that, okay? So that's what I did for these seeds here four or five days ago. And there are tiny, tiny little sprouts coming up for the basil. The chives and the oregano haven't come up yet. You probably can't see them with the camera, but there's some little green sprouts coming up there for the basil. So once they grow a little bit higher and probably like I'd say two inches, then you can transplant them. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to transplant them into our ball jar. I'm using a clear one so you can kind of see what we're doing. But we first want to add our stones. And we even have, right now we have to take the materials we can get. So we even found some of these seashells. You could even put those in the bottom. You just need to make sure, since the ball jar is a closed container, you need to make sure there's a place for drainage. So I put this paper towel in there when um, I'm putting in these rocks so that it doesn't break the jar. And then once you have a nice layer, a couple of inches of those rocks, you can take that out and then that'll give you a nice little um, drainage area. Now we're going to take our seed starter mix and we're going to put it into, or you could use a container mix for this step. It doesn't necessarily need to be the seed starter mix, but this is a small jar. And then you take your small plant and you want to make sure when you dig the plant out that you get the whole roots. And then you want to loosen the roots a little bit just to make sure that they have room to grow. And then you will plant them right in your ball jar. Now because a ball jar is um, and we want to put the dirt right on top of there. <laughs> because a ball jar is a closed container, you want to make sure that you don't start your seeds right in the ball jar. There won't be enough drainage, and the seed starter um, medium, you need to have 
good drainage. So that's why we do that in a different container. So then um, we have our basil in here and um, you can add a little soil to the top. And then we're gonna show you a project of making, using this as a, a beautiful gift um, for a shower or for another event. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but before we do, I just wanted to let you know that there are a lot of good um, nutritional benefits for these herbs. So we have mint that we talked about here and here, and then we also have chives, which um, is a great addition, and we're gonna have some recipes showing some of these herbs in a minute, and then the basil and then the um, oregano. So any of those are gonna be easy to grow in pots, put them on your patio. You're gonna have lots of anti-inflammatory and antioxidants from those. So, um, so enjoy your herbs and thanks for joining me today. Have a great day. Welcome to part three of our ball jar project. I'm Nancy Sawicki, I'm a dietitian for Northwestern, the West region. And we're here at Living Well today and we're working together with Sherry and Mary and myself um, doing a project together. So you saw how you decorate the jar, you saw how you plant the herbs, and now I have the fun part of preparing food with it. So the first recipe I did was, so it's called a um, balsamic parmesan roasted asparagus and tomato, um, kind of like a casserole. So you just start off with a little bit of olive oil in the baking pan. You take your colorful uh, grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, and then you just take asparagus and you roast this in the oven for at 425 for maybe like 25 minutes or so. And what I was noticing when I was working with this, how beautiful nature's bounty is, like the colorful tomatoes and the asparagus. And then when it came out of the oven, I topped it with a little fresh oregano, fresh Parmesan cheese, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of um, parsley just to garnish and also some fresh basil. And that's something I, you can cook with the oregano, but I found um, the fresh parsley and the um, basil are nice to just add afterwards. So that's just gonna be a side dish. And then we also have balsamic vinegar, which I reduced. I just took like a cup of balsamic vinegar, I put it in this little saucepan on medium heat and let just let it cook like a half hour or so and it thickens. Um, so I'll just show you how that turned out. So it's just a little, it's a little thickened balsamic. So you're just gonna drizzle it like a syrup almost, but nothing else was added. It was just balsamic. So it gives you an idea. You can purchase it this way, but it was kind of fun to just make it myself. So I like that. All right, so the second recipe is a smoky cauliflower uh, and onion uh, frittata. So it was very easy to do. Um, what I used was our nice skillet here, a little olive oil, and this is chopped up cauliflower and onion that I sauteed with a little bit of olive oil. And then I added the smoky paprika and black pepper. Then I had an extra zucchini, so I just chopped that up and threw it in. And that's what you can do when you're making like a vegetable frittata. Use whatever vegetables you wanna use. So we did that, you wanna get the moisture out. You're supposed to add like a, maybe a quarter cup of water while it's cooking with the lid on. And then the last part of it, just let the water evaporate. And now I'm just gonna add this egg mixture. So these are about nine eggs with a little bit of milk. And um, I'm just gonna pour it on. And this one does have some parsley in it. And now we're just gonna pop it in the oven. So I'll do that after a bit. And then this is the finished product. So it's very nice. Um, it slides right out of the pan. There's gear Swiss cheese in it as well. And then just did a little bit of quick garnishing. The recipe called for a side salad to accompany it. So you've got a lot of vegetables going on here. This is just arugula. And I'm going to add the dressing, which is just olive oil, red wine vinegar, a tiny dot of honey, Dijon mustard. You don't even have to add the honey if you don't want. And a little black pepper. Just toss it. And then I just thought, well, let's add a little red onion. And I had a couple of blueberries left over here, so I thought, eh, we'll just add that as well. Gives some nice color. So that's going to accompany the frittata. Then you have the vegetable dish. And also I wanted to just show you a beverage you made. 
So this is all about ball jars. So I wanted to show you first. This is what got the whole thing started. Um, a coworker and friend gave me this idea. It's a little bunny jar. I made it for Easter, but I'm keeping it out because I feel with the growing season, we still have bunnies running around. So I just put it, use as a vase for flowers. You can also put straws in there if you like to have straws handy. Here we just have like a little display using a ball jar. This, um, I cleaned out my pantry recently and I had a few extra ball jars. So I just started taking these out of packages and put them in the pantry because it's clear, you can see what's in there. And that was good. Um, and then a beverage. You can serve a beverage in your ball jar as well. So onto the beverage. I put blueberries on the bottom and then I used frozen mango. And what I like about using the frozen mango, first off, I didn't have to worry if I could find a ripe one, but it was so easy to work with. And with it being frozen, it acts like an ice cube. So it's keeping the drink really cold. And we're just gonna add some sparkling water. And also in here is about six limes that were um, pressed um, for the juice. I'll show you what I used for that. And so I just made a little skewer with it. So I just kind of did the frozen mango, a little bit of lime, blueberry, and mint. And mint is crushed into the bottom, so it's almost like a mojito. And so this is what I use to squeeze the lime juice. Put it face down and squeeze right into it. You get a lot of nice, fresh lime juice. And I wanted to tell you too that the way ball jars first started, it was back in 1880, back out in Colorado, a young man, only 26, his name is John Landis Mason, invented these um, ball jars. They're American made, and he made a, he got a patent for it, and it was just to help people with their summer bounty to preserve this food to take them through the winter in an airtight container. And since then, they've lasted all these years, and they're really fun. Oh, I have one last thing I wanted to show you, using mint. So. This was a little tedious, but I used a piece of wax paper and I put mint leaves all on the paper and I just brushed some dark chocolate onto it and then you freeze it. So if you were doing like a little dinner party and everyone was kind of full, so you just served a little sorbet with some berries on it, you could put some of these as like a little garnish. So they're edible because they're a little mint leaf. So we used all of the herbs today, the um, a spit, or, um, parsley, basil, chives, that was the last thing. I just wanted to show you we're gonna just garnish with chives. You're not supposed to really cook with chives. They're a little bit too delicate, but they're nice to serve as a garnish. And you can put that on a baked potato, um, the eggs, you can use it in a salad dressing as well. So it's fun to utilize what you grew. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Sherry to show you more of the completed project. Thank you. This is the finished project here, from printing with the doily to planting the herb, and now just finishing it up with the hemp. And I am a collector of spoons. I love spoons. Uh, if you've got extra spoons at home, Goodwill always has a stack. You can go and pick some. Sometimes they're like a dollar, two dollars. You can actually hammer it. I had a friend of mine here, husband, um, did holes in all of them so you could actually um, if you want you could do chimes um, outside with them or you could use them for garden markers so here we just have it as a display on the outside if you want you could write a little um, sweet something to the person say that this is a um, mint or something inside if you want you could also hammer it with the um, inside and this is, says basil here the L came off a little bit funny, but it is there. So that's just by using a steel block and these little guys here that will give you the different letters to spell your parsley, thyme, uh, mint, anything that you'll be doing from your garden. And you could hammer it flat and use them as a garden marker. So great idea and fun to work with Nancy and Mary and have fun in your garden, have fun planting and have fun cooking and eating all the good things that you'll make with your herbs. Have a great day.